Hey there folks, welcome to the Houdini Formograph tutorial series. This week I'm going to show you how to do some procedural model generation of rocks. We're going to be going through how to make these rock wall that I have in the example, but I'm also going to show you how to populate a scene with rocks with just a few additional nodes. So let's get into it. All right, first off, we want to establish the shape of the rock wall. So I'm going to make a box and use the expression to keep the bottom at zero and just give it a bit of length so that it looks like a section of the wall. So we want the rocks to look like they actually fit together with little intersections. So we're going to use something called the Voronoi fracture. This node is used for a lot of destruction setups, but what it does is it takes a piece of geometry and it breaks it up using the points that you make in this second input. So you're going to get some really cool looks if you just mess around with some different point setups. So we're going to use a points from volume for our wall. The reason that we're doing this as opposed to a scatter node is that the Voronoi fracture works by making a piece centered around the input point. So we want the rocks to be inside this volume, not just up on the edges. So I'm going to hook that up to the second input and just mess around with the jitter a bit. And you can see that we have some cuts in the geo, which is great. So I want the rocks to be a bit longer than they are wide. So I'm going to transform the geo before the points from volume. And then copy that parameter, make a new transform and paste that parameter and then enter one divided by before it so that it scales back to normal. For a more low poly or stylized look, these rocks could actually be exactly what you want, but I'm gonna try to add a little bit more detail into them for our purposes. We're gonna use a for each loop so that we can give each rock just a little bit of variety. So use the for each primitive option and if you look at the primitive attributes, you'll see that we have this name attribute that was generated by the Voronoi. So just enter that as the attribute to loop through. Now I'm gonna set this to single pass since it's gonna get a little heavy and just find a rock that I like. Okay, yeah, we'll work with this one. All right, so now first I'm gonna drop a smooth node and just set that a little bit to relax the points. Then I'm going to remesh this to give us more geo to work with, uh, adjusting the target size to something around 0.2. And then I'm going to do another smooth just to round out some of those corners that we have. Now I want to start giving it some shape. So I'm going to drop a point pop and dive inside. Here you can get real creative and really start messing around with different noises to add detail and just find the look that you like. I like the way that the whirly noise looks, so I'm going to make that, promoting the frequency and the offset. Then use a displace along normals node. Wire in the P and the N, and let's use this dist1 as the amount and then promote the scale and wire this to the out position. Now I'm gonna bring the scale way down, frequency up a bit just to get something that I'm happy with. Then I'll subdivide to smooth it out again. And now I wanna add uh, some finer detail in there. So I'm gonna make another point pop drop in anti-aliased noise, setting it to 3D, and add that to the position, and promote all those parameters. This one will stay pretty low, since I'm just using it for like a nice finer detail. The noise nodes are really setting the shape, so definitely explore all the possibilities here. Add more noise before the subdivisions, after it, try out different noises. Here's where you can really take these and get a real high level of detail if that's your goal. I'm just going to drop a normals node now and then turn off single pass to see what we've got. It's going to take a second and there is our rock wall. One thing you might notice is that the noise is being applied evenly across the whole thing, making it look kind of fake. So to fix that, I'm going to put Houdini into manual mode here. 
What this does is prevents it from updating the viewport. I'm just doing that so that we don't have to wait a second or two for every time we want to change something. So go back up to the top of the 4-H loop and click Create Meta Import Node. And name this Info. And if you guys are unfamiliar with this, you can go check out uh, one of our earlier tutorials that's on just 4-H loops to learn how this works. Now I'm going to type our detail expression into the offset of the noises. So detail, grab that info node, set it to look at the iteration, and point zero. Okay. And I'm just going to copy this down here, turn off manual, and voila, we've got some randomness, which is making it look more natural. Cool, so at the top of the tutorial, I said that I was gonna show you how to populate a scene with these rocks. So I'm just gonna copy over this whole setup. And then in the for each, I'm gonna add a transform in the positions. We'll use some H script typing minus dollar CEX, which will center it in the X position. Now, do the same for the other values, just changing the X to Y and Z. And now I'm just going to drop a pack to make this easier to work with. And you can see all our rocks are right here in the center. So now we're going to use the copy stamp setup we used in a previous tutorial. So I'm going to make a grid and scatter some points onto it. We want to make an attribute so we can grab each of these random pieces. So I'm going to middle mouse here to see how many rocks we have. And then make an attribute randomize, naming it to type. Set the dimensions to one, distribution to uniform discrete. And we'll put that max that we just looked up here. Now make a copy stamp node, turning on stamp inputs and tell it to look for our type attribute. Make a blast node, enter the stamp expression to look for our type attribute, and then set it to points, and delete non-selected. Hook all these up, and there you go, you've got rocks scattered across a surface. Now, of course, you could mess around with p-scale, normal directions to add a bit of variety, but there you have it. That's just our intro to rocks. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. You can download the project files off of our site. And until next time.